Sean, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Pete. Thanks for having me. Now, another topic that we get a lot of questions about, and I know you guys talk about all the time, is how do I handle banding? I'm printing on something and I'm seeing banding. Now, there's a number of different reasons you might see banding, and typically, I think the number one is you've selected the wrong media on your panel. Mm -hmm. So that's always that's, the first That's probably one. the most common. But if that's not the case, and it's a paper that you've been printing on in the past, and then all of a sudden, it's the same paper, you've got everything mm -hmm. entered properly, and you're getting banding, how do we handle that from the control panel? So there's a couple different things that we can do with that. Um, and that's some, um, let's set this behind us here. We can do length feed adjustment with the printer. So on the printer, there's, um, again, in the maintenance menu, there's some paper or printing quality things, and one of them is doing the um, length adjustment. So what this does is it prints out a, you know, a page that's got 30 inches, a 30 inch ruler basically, that's kind of marked. A little bit. Yeah, I know it's hard to see, but we've got a millimeter and an inch, and it's marked by inches and just what, 30 inches? 30 inches, yep. Okay. And so what we do is we print this out, um, take our ruler mm -hmm. and, and measure that out, and then we can add or subtract depending if it's you know, too long or too short. Um, and there's some mathematics behind it that is in the, the user guide that um, is available to everybody that, you know, to, to make those super fine adjustments. Now, you've got a metal ruler back here. Yep. If we can pull that out. Is, now, explain why you would want to use a metal ruler versus a wooden ruler on something like this. And this, I'm sorry, yardstick, not ruler. Yeah. Because it's got to be at least 30 inches. So explain why you would want to use a metal yardstick versus a wooden one. Well, the biggest thing is that it's just going to be much more rigid and easier to work with. Um, and typically way more accurate okay. than, that, than I see. Because obviously wood can expand and contract mm -hmm. with, you know, with weather environments too. So. And if you're doing this type, because there's two different quality or two different length adjustments mm -hmm. to get rid of banding. And this one's not necessarily even something for banding. This may be something where I know I talked to people that worked in the airplane industry and yep. they're printing blueprints or things like that that need to be, especially on a plane, they need to be within a one sixty four hundredth of a, uh, an inch in terms of accuracy. And trust me, if I'm flying on a plane, I want that type of accuracy. Absolutely. In which case, they've got crazy yardsticks that have those teeny tiny measurements. Yep. So for this, it's not really necessarily for banding. This is if you're printing something and you notice your prints are coming out too small or too large. I, I know a lot of customers that use this are people that are doing canvas gallery wraps. Yep. And those and it, have to be perfect. They have to be perfect to wrap the way yep. they want. And they notice it's coming out a quarter of an inch too short mm -hmm. or too long. And I know that sometimes can be attributed to the stretch of canvas. Sure. But so this, this length adjustment isn't for banding as much as it is noticing that the sizing so, you're yep, printing exactly. is correct. Your two scenarios of canvas and somebody that's doing schematics that needs to be that dead on, this is what they would do to kind of get everything back in. Um, okay. And it works. I mean, I've, I've been to numerous accounts over the years that we use this and it's, we make everything perfect. And the instructions, again, just walk you right through yep. it. So you're going to walk up, tell it what media you're printing to, because it is media specific, well, correct? It's, it's going to ask you which, if it's roll one, roll two, or, or you know, if you're putting in a you know, sheet fed paper, um, it will print it out. And after it's done printing, it's going to, you know, basically have you measure it and then on the control panel again, it will tell you to adjust. You know, if it's perfect right away, then you just go zero percent, and then there's it's in increments on. You know, again, if it's negative or positive, depending on what you need to do. And then once you do that, you're going to print it again. Yep, and double and check. And then it. check to see if the adjustment fixed it or not. Correct. And if it didn't, then you enter the adjustment until yep. you get it to where it's exactly. landing on zero adjustment needed. You hit zero, and it's finished. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so then let's talk about the other one. The so, other time that you would, or the other setting on this one, which so, I think was quality. Yeah, it's print quality. So the other one is print quality, and, and that one, a um, little bit different of a print. Um, this one is all done automatically. So this one we print out, um, we tell it to do an auto adjust. It prints out this information. It's reading, there's a lot of fine lines in here and, and gradations, and it's reading all that and adjusting for the, the quality of the print. And that would, that's what we would, you know, get our banding kind of back in play there. So this kind of similar to your calibration target, you don't need to do anything nope. because it's printing those and it knows based on what it sees, 
whether it needs to adjust for gap banding where there's a small gap between lines or if there's overlap banding where it's overlapping and it's printing too close on Correct. passes. Yep, and so, that's all automatically done and it's reading itself back in and, and makes its adjustments on the fly. So this is one of those things that if you're seeing banding where you're seeing lines in your print, you'd use this, not the other one, to get rid of those Correct. lines. Yep. This and, would be more of a banding quality issue. And this is, like I said, or we mentioned at the beginning, this is where you most commonly, you see that type of banding. You entered plain paper and it was supposed to be on a glossy or satin yep. type paper. But if you know everything else is right, you're on the right core size. It's a three inch core and you've got three inch core entered and you're on the right type of paper. Everything is set correctly and you're seeing banding, then you That's go when to you this. Would take this into so walk me through the steps on the panel on this. So in the menu, like we went to do the length adjustment for the, the media, we just print, print the quality adjustment, and that's what this is. And you just hit auto, and it will go through and, and print that out. Now, with this, if you printed on this media, you did the adjustment for banding, you pulled the media out and printed on a different media, and you put that paper back in, do you need to do the quality adjustment again, potentially, for banding? Is it, or is it going to stay with it? I mean, I would say if, I mean, if you would, if you're seeing it on a different media, then you can go through and, and run that adjustment again. Again, it, using very little ink, very little paper, mm -hmm. so. I just didn't know if it, like for this specific media, we did it for this one. Yeah. I pulled this media out. Is it now done for that machine for this media? Well, it's done for, I mean, it's kind of work, should be on, on all the medias, but you know, you know, this is a, a, a thinner weight, glossy photo. If we were to go to a super heavy weight, canvas or matte paper, you know, there could be some variance there just because it's such a different different paper. Yeah, the nice thing, like you said, this doesn't use much media. It's what, maybe 10 inches. Yeah, so it's not that, using yeah. a ton. In ink, it's hardly any of And trust me, I get it. There's certain papers, like some of our fine art papers, mm -hmm. some of the Heine Mule medias, they're not inexpensive. You're gonna spend some money for them. So, you know, I'd rather spend 10 inches of paper to get rid of the banding this way than to print multiple it, print after exactly. print after print and see banding and you're stuck with it. Yeah. Uh, I know I've done huge banners of like athletes and stuff like that, that they're gonna get hung up that they're six feet long. I don't wanna see the banding. I don't want people to see mm -hmm. banding. I want the print to look great. So I'd rather do this and make sure that I've got a quality adjustment done. Correct. Then waste a six foot banner and then realize at the end of the six feet, man, there's banding all yeah. through this. And, so. the, and the printing technology that's, you know, that's gone through from way back when to today is enhanced so much with the sensors that are built into this machine. The machine can, you know, adjust on the fly. So there's a lot of stuff in the background, electronics that are going on to get rid of that banding. You know, back in the days we used to have two print heads on our 12 color machines and you're never gonna get two print heads exact. Now we're down to one, it's pretty much exact. So we've done a lot to overcome any banding issues that you would see more, more frequently, let's say than you do now. Okay. So. If you guys ever have any questions and you need more information than what we talked about today, feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-4-LEXJET or LEXJET.com. We're happy to help you in any way you may need.